Well, welcome to a new Dave's Workshop Tours video. And this time I met Vintic Moto right in the heart of Melbourne. Max here, who runs the business, is known for his panel work. So let's go inside and see what he's up to. Originally from New Zealand, Max started out in the crash repair business, then cut his teeth in the restoration game working on Porsches here in Melbourne, before starting Vintic Moto. Nicknamed the Rust Doctor, Max has earned a reputation of being able to fabricate any panel to look factory perfect and now works on cars as wide ranging as Carreras and Camaros. Okay, Max, thanks very much for having us along today. Uh, tell us a little bit about your business here. No problem, Dave. Um, Vintage Moto's been here um, ever since uh, the first lockdown, so it's been really good. Just close the doors and work. And you pretty much prepared to work on anything? Anything. I um, used to work at a place called Belford Garage. David Belford, and um, so I started doing the old 356s and 911s there. And um, but lately, I've been doing quite a lot of uh, right hand drive conversions on Mustangs uh, where we got the dash 3D printed and we made it all look correct. When you do the dash, the instrument cluster goes down towards the middle when traditionally in a left hand drive it goes down towards the outside and just looks wrong. So we got everything sw swapped over in CAD, had them printed up, and now everything drops down beautifully and looks perfect as a right-hand drive conversion from the factory. Okay, would you like to show us about? Yeah, sure. Um, here we've got a little um, Mark One Escort, just um, on completion, just on the assembly. It's got the two-litre Pinto motor in it. And uh, yeah, we're just trying to get it all back together, but yeah. as you can see down there, we've got three brake boosters and every single one of them's buggered. So it's going through all the parts and finding out what, what has to be um, restored because everything's worn out and we received the car in pieces so it's kind of putting the jigsaw back together and making sure everything works. Yeah, what sort of state was it when you first received it? We actually got another car. It was, um, it was a metallic green one, still a four-door, the four-door. And we got the green one, we put it on the stands and it was teeter-totting on the stands. So I knew straight away the front rail on this side was bent. And I said to them it's going to cost X amount to straighten it get it all right, you're probably better off to find another body because the four doors weren't for that much. Uh, so they found another body up in Queensland, which this one is, and then we found out the rail on the side was completely rotten. So we'd already gone too far by then um, down the rabbit hole with this one, so we had to replace the rail anyway. Um, most of the bottom of the car's been replaced, front fenders have been replaced, the whole front of the car's been replaced, and it had a bit of damage on this apron as well. So it's had a lot of work, all this area was gone, that's gone, bits around there were gone, and the floors, and they all seem to do the same thing, the cows, the front floor pan, they all seem to go on the, the, um, the boot floor, gone as well. So a lot of rust work, the doors are off the green car, that was in really good condition there, but the green car still had rust issues in the sills, floors, everything like that as well, and the bent rail. So we've kind of made one car out of two, um, it's a pretty special colour as well. It is. It's an Aston Martin Vanquish Green, uh, British Racing Green. They said they wanted a white car at first, so everything was prepped up in white, and then already changed mind to a green or a grey. We kind of steered him towards the green. It's more of a classic racing car. He wanted a kind of a street, street track racing kind of a um, thing, so we've even flared up the guards a little bit wider because they only come to about here. So we had to pull the guard, flatten it out, add a piece to it, and fold the edge again. And it's come out all right. It's not, the Mexico guards are up higher, but because the one that still would have a little bit of clearance and ground clearance, we ended up just flaring out the um, standard guards and pulling out the rear ones to suit the wheels, so it will suit, uh, we'll, we'll get a road webby. And is the client guided by you in the styling? Or? I will steer, I'll give him options. So um, he went with that and we've gone to kind of gone a Lotus um, colour scheme, blacking out through the wet, through the windows, blacking out the rear, and it's still going to have the chrome and the bumpers that will kind of look that Lotus kind of a colour. Um, yeah, so again, just finding all the parts, going through the parts. The motor, we had two motors to choose from. This motor has been worked. We pulled it apart found out it was all rusty inside. It had been reconditioned, but it had a little bit of water inside the motor. So we had to um, hone the bores, check it all out, 
check out the head, put on um, new components like valve seals, everything like that, lap the valves. Um, so here we do do a little bit of mechanical as well as body. We try and steer away from that. Assisting Max on the Escort build is friend and part-time collaborator, Ryan. I don't do the paint here, I do the metal work. I do the filler work if someone wants to um, get a show car job done. Otherwise, we'll send, do the metal work and then send it off. Somebody else will do the filler and paint. Um, but I've had some instances where I've had the filler and paint and I haven't been happy with the end result if I've had to put the car back together. So I like to do the, I've done the filler work on this one and send it off to get painted. Okay, what next? Got a 911 Targa. It's an everyday driver. And he used to drive to work every day. He used to cut his tools under the bonnet and everything like that. It had a cosmetic restoration years ago and um, it's come back into me and it just, it's starting to rust everywhere. Seal's completely gone. And he thought it was just gonna be the front fenders. It needed a little bit on the bottom of the doors. But then we found that the fenders on the other side were welded onto the sill. And the uh, sills were just in behind the um, side moulds were completely rotten all the way through. So it was an Australian car. Uh, it is a right-hand drive car. Right. Is that common on a Porsche for of this vintage to suffer that kind of rot? Not really. I don't know if it's an English all right. delivered one, but it, it doesn't seem to have gone past in here. I mean, everything we took off the car, we've got new new panels to go on but the panels we took off just seem to be rusty between the outer and the inner there. I don't know if I've got that panel lying around from there. So I've had the here's the other. So they're all starting to rot out between these two layers and it was the outer that was rusty as well and this as well but on the inside it's nice and clean. So he's, he's, he's been lucky on that respect. Mm, yeah. But the other side, different matter. But it wouldn't be long until it will start to creep out, so better off the um So I've had the owner, I know the owner quite well, and he's been coming in and doing a bit of work on it himself and, and trying to save a little money. I do let the owners come in and work on the cars. I had to um, fabricate all the bottom of this make all that up usually the, that has a cutting I didn't have to put that in there because that's usually only if you're running an oil cooler to the front um, but it does help hold all of the outer goes on to that okay. obviously once that other inner piece goes in um, oh. a lot of the targets uh, I, I wouldn't imagine there'd be too many left because a lot of them just get cut down into convertibles yeah Wow. Uh, and they are more for to, them now because the well, target exactly. more, nobody wanted targets, nobody wanted a target no, I don't I've know why always I always preferred a target I think maybe it's because I knew I'd be able to have that little bit of room and yeah. for me oh, okay. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, exactly. but yeah I, I could never understand all through the 90s if you ever mentioned that you were more into targets yeah than a they used to think, seem to think it was a girl's car or something yeah, like that yeah, yeah, yeah but I, mean, I just think that that bar just, just yeah oh, beautiful don't know oh yeah I mean the um it has helped that they have done a, a, another a reinterpretation of the Targa on the new cars. All right, what else we got? Let's have a look. Got another nine, well it's a 912 Porsche. Ah, this one's a special this, bit of work. This is going to be a little bit special here yeah, because this one's actually going electric. Yes, yeah, so I said to him you could probably lose a bit of space in the back and put extra batteries in, but he wants, he's got a family, young family and he wants to put his family in it so he wants to hide all the batteries in certain places. Right, okay. And who de decides on that? Obviously, weight distribution for. Well, you'd, you'd want that, wouldn't car. you? Yeah, exactly. So, the company. Um, what's the name of the EV place in Williamson? Something ja da Jaunt EV or something like that? Something like that. They do a lot of Land Rovers. Yeah, that, Land, Land Rovers is their speciality. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't right. know. I'm going to try and um, build something that looks like a fuel tank, but it'll be holding the batteries instead under the front. It's actually quite a dry car. It's um, it's an American import, so she's left hooker. Um, it's got a few little rust issues, but it's not as bad as um, the 911. It's, the seals are really good, from what we can see, and from what I, I stuck a camera down and it looked really good through there. It does have rust issues up high, which usually means it's come from a hot climate in, the, in America, because you get sweating and it's all that happening in certain areas around the windscreen. 
and up in certain areas that where water drips down, broken seals, stuff like that. But the bottom was quite dry, apart from the floor. Seals are good. The floor had already been played with and cut up and chopped and changed. So we've got new sections of floor to go in. But other than that, it's, um, it's not a bad looking car. And really straight, the gaps were all nice and tight. So you can tell that when the gaps are all nice and the alignment's pretty good, that it hasn't had any major accidents. Um, the Porsche, all as, as opposed to like a Ferrari or something like that, they, the mods that have been done over the years and what have you, they've been yeah. much more acceptable in, in, with the, it seems to be with the Porsche. It does seem to be. But I mean, it does it present more with problems one. with it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Even with this early 9, uh, 356, that I'm just finishing the stage on the filler. Um, it was a racing car in America, so I've done a right-hand drive conversion on this one. But um, the motors, it, it's still got the race motor in it, and it's all got um, 912 braking. Um, it's all been upgraded to 912 brakes, five-speed gearbox, everything like that. Um, yeah, tell me about how did it come to you, and what work have you done on this one? It actually um, was a friend's car, um, and I was doing it for him. It came in for rust issues, floors, um, the panel was all, all bashed up, been, you know, it was a racing car. The front nose had been cut off another car and had been welded onto this car 40 mil short. So we actually had to extend it, uncut it all, pull it all out, add 40 mil to the front because the bonnet and the thing was aligning like that in the nose. So we brought it all back into um, queue. The guy that brought this is um, from Perth and he wanted me to carry on and finish it. So I've done the finishing. He wanted the right hand drive conversion done as well. So it's a C. Usually on the C's what they do is um, put a B tank in it. But I have, if you go around here and have a look at the front. I've actually retained the C tank. And I've changed all the steering in the, um, every other component for the handbrake and everything like that over. So that was here. That was the access for the steering box. So that's that shape there, and that was way over there. So all I've done is just moved the whole tank over, fabricated that up to look like the same as it was on the other side, and made a new lid to go on there to cover the steering box, and fabricated all this to look the same as standard, to help hold the battery. Just pretty much flipped everything over to the, to the other side. So at the moment, I'm just getting trying to get all the gaps in that right, because they have that perfect three mil gap. They're known for that in the alignment. As I said, it was, it was chopped through here and through here and everything was put back in the wrong place. This okay. guy's going a little bit outlaw with this, which is sacrilege to some people. He's going the old rally spotlights and, you know, um, no bumpers, all, been, all the holes are filled up. Well, there's plenty of pristine factory cars done out there, so yeah, there is, not there do is. something different. Yeah, right? it's, it's what used to be really bad is really really to do it to a 356, but now it seems to be more accepted, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. more of it. And when do you hope to have this one? Uh... Well, I'm just on the final stages now, and then I'll send it off to get painted. Um, and uh, hopefully I'll get it back soon, and then it's back to like the Escort um, reassembly. So getting it all back into the uh, to see. That stage things. Okay. So, but now it's just down to the final little things, getting it all right. Okay, what have we got next? That's another, so not just German cars, we've got little Italian cars, got a couple of Fiat's inside. Got a little Bambino over there, um, Chitta Quinto, and um, is it the way you say it? I don't know. And a little 124 coupe. Um, we've got a lot of the parts actually from, um, these are splines doing the Porsche. A lot of the parts we were getting from this is uh, from Czechoslovakia and Lithuania. All the way from there, this bonnet, because this one was in a bad accident. So I had to take all this out. That was squashed all the way back. That little hole over here was completely squashed closed. Had to panel all that and get it all, all out straight. But the nose was... Um, it had rust issues as well as damage, so we looked around and the only place, when I'm looking for parts, I usually just Google image, parts for sale. Right. And this one came up in Lithuania, so. You Google places. image a bonnet for a 1970s Fiat. Exactly, and that's where we found it all. They seem to have a lot of parts over there for these. It was new old stock. Wow. The same with the, um, the, 
the front nose. The, uh, the other one, the original one, being that it had been an accident. I had multiple, multiple joints all over the place. And it was just, it's either cut it all up and do the welds properly. Mine doesn't look like it's been gas welded. I like gas welding. I don't like um, TIG welding, it's too cold. It makes the metal too. Um, if you release the weld, it's okay, but sometimes when you MIG or TIG, it's a little bit. Uh, change the molecular structure of the steel next to the weld and if it's a high flex area it can crack or break and you don't want that happening down the track so I usually I'll tack things together and then I'll run through with the oxyacetylene and gas weld everything and then release the weld you do get a little bit more warpage from doing it that way but you know what you're doing you know how to control the heat and you know how to release and um, plenish the weld afterwards it uh, comes out fine and this modified or would it go back to a factory? Factory, sort of? all factory. Uh, so this was all crunched back. That was all things so I had to bring all that back. It was getting pretty thin because it always had previous repairs. Usually when um, some repairers like to grind the living out of something and then they, you can that. Right. Um, <laughs> there's not much left of the steel. It's pretty thin and you go to go um, beat it and you start getting creases in funny places and it's just it's too thin so you have to cut out pieces and replace it with a but I've ground it, so I had to do a little bit of that around here. It was just way too thin. So but all this is another a new piece that came from um, Lithuania as well. So you're saying new old stock? So new old stock. I mean, they must new have old stock. imported it after the wall came down or something like that, didn't they? I would say so. It was, it was either Czechoslovakia or Lithuania, I can't remember. So at the moment, yeah, we're on the floor at the moment, cleaning up the floor. Um, mainly surface rust, a little bit of pitting here and there. So it's in there with the acid and the wire wheel just to try and clean it all down. He did a clever trick when he came in here to get rid of all the tar and stuff like that, the lining, the bed lining, and he brought in some dry ice and just poured it in with buckets and stuff like that and just and started tapping and it just broke away all the, um, which I'd never seen before. It's quite a good trick. Pressurised, dry ice? The no, it was system. just, um, he had to board it in a big um, esky um, chili bin yeah. um, and just poured it onto it and left it on there for a little bit and then just tapped it with a bloody little a light hammer, not too heavy. So it didn't want to damage the floor yeah. and it broke it all up. So now it's just a matter of going through the floor and... Wire wheeling, it's a bit of surface rust on the other side, which we need to put a bit more acid on. But this side is almost pretty much done. So yeah, it, it's, it wasn't too bad. I had a bit of um, dry rot through there so I've replaced a lot of the bottom section so the front's pretty much close to being done we just got to get onto the back now a little bit of accident damage here and there they were um, a little bit bashed around the old gill but the one next to that they're all on little dollies there's a little Volvo P1800 the same as the old Roger Moore the Saint car So again, rotten floors, um, pretty much replaced. The bottom of the pillars, bottom of the cowl, and a lot of the um, toe panel and floors on this inner. It's got three, three um, uh, layers in the sills, so all three layers have had to be replaced. And now it's, um, yeah, now we're working on the upper, upper pieces once that's repaired. And we've got a few holes on the other side there. Then the fenders, front fenders can go on. Um, well, just scuffle first. So I've had to do battery tray. This on both sides of the scuttle. And, uh, yeah, it's never ending. Never ending. He's sourced some um, parts from crashed and damaged cars. Other than that, it's these new parts. You can only get a certain amount of parts for these though. It's not like the Volkswagens or the Porsches where you can pretty much in the Mustangs where you can get everything. With half the workshop still to walk around, there'll be more from Max coming soon. A couple of weeks after this visit, he told me he and Ryan had got the Escort's Pinto engine ready for its first startup since its rebuild. I didn't hesitate to get down there for an oral reminder from okay, my Okay, so um, getting ready for the first start. I have to start it up and see if she'll crack into life. 
Let's just turn her on. Ryan's got the start key up there. Uh, 125 psi of raw power. Raw power. <laughs> Up um, 0.7 of a litre. Um, used to be a little 1300. Uh-huh. And now it's going to the 2 litre. Um, that was in the car when, when he purchased it. It was in the car? It was As in the car. As a four-door? Yes. Uh, wow. No, it wasn't original. No, the, no, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the, the uh, person that they brought from up in Queensland had obviously played with the car and put it in there. I don't know if he had it running with a 2 litre, but it wasn't running very well. Um, when it came down, it has been out of the car and it was running. Well, no, we, ne we never actually got it running. That's right, it came down the tow truck. Um, and then the owner um, water blasted the whole car down and um, obviously didn't cover up the holes properly. So the motor was full of water when we went to put a sump on it. And um, so we've cleaned it all out, honed it out, cleaned it, made sure it was all right and correct, checked all the, um, all the measurements and all the things. and. Uh, it's, it's reading pretty good pressure on, all across all the cylinders with a pressure test. So it's just a now a matter of seeing if um, it'll kick in the light and run all right. All right, okay. Well, let's, let's We're expecting an asphalt roostering 100 horsepower. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> right. If it starts. Yeah. Uh, power is on. Um, you've got the starter. No. <coughs> going on negative or positive? Positive. You should be right. Dash is on. Dash is on. Lights are on. Yep. It's making all the noises and squeaks. I think so. Give it a crack. Yeah. Get a throttle. Oh, why not? It's quiet. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, do we need to give it a couple of kicks. Hey, no, fuel pump's not going. Isn't it? Oh, no, why not? Pump. Oh, oh let's make the sound, make the noise. That's a bit better. No leaks? Nope. All right, give it a couple of squirts then maybe. Give it a couple of squirts. I don't want to jam you. Don't jam my finger. Just squirting. All right, pump it. Can I draw? Yeah, well you get started, bottom. <laughs> what are we doing? Coil? Coil? Tension is mounting. I see a red light showing. It was and it is now. Oh. Yep. Yeah, Oops, what was that? Never mind. Fuel oh, that was a fuel, uh, radiator cap. Alright, we've got spark, we've got fuel. You control the throttle then. We've got some sort of compression. Do you want me to uh, give it a wiggle? Yeah. Alright. Go. Ooh. Ooh. Here we go. Wow. Happy? Sounds good. Whoop. <laughs> Whoop, camera. Bit of, bit of smoke from the fluids. Running an all four. What's the bonus? Bonus. Absolutely. That's going to be great. We might need to um, not too much smoke. Top up the fluids. Yeah, all good. Well, think what'll be next for you now? Uh, we're just going to make sure everything's tightened up and buttoned up. Um, once we've had it run through a few cycles, heat it up because it has been. Um, Pretty much we took all the pistons out, made sure the bores were all cleaned and honed. And so now it's going to be taken through a few heat cycles, make sure it builds up a little bit and make it everything seated. And then, um, yeah, go for a drive. Good test the gearbox because we had the gearbox completely apart as well. Cleaned all that, changed all the seals. Great. So, yeah, everything on this thing, all the drive training has been done, gone through and checked. Yeah. So, uh, I'm sure uh, there's a lot of escort uh, owners out there that will. Appreciate that sound. Pinto Ignitol. Yeah. So we have to play with the mixture and the um, timing a bit as well. Cool. Oh, sounds alright though. Oh, sounds bloody wonderful. 
That's it for now, but in episode two from Vintique Moto, we'll continue our look around the rest of the workshop and hopefully get to see the completed Escort out for its test drive. In the meantime, there's plenty to see from other workshops I've visited, so please take a look around the rest of the channel. I'm sure you'll find your favorite classic being worked on somewhere, and if not, make sure you subscribe because it's bound to feature sometime soon.